Hey everybody, welcome back to BK's Bullets. Today we're talking the Robin Compendium. Hey everybody, welcome back to BK's Bullets. As always, I'm your host, Frank Casina, and today, since we're reading a book about a young man, I shaved to look like a young man, uh, not really, but we're talking about the Robin Compendium. This is the Tim Drake Compendium 1. Uh, we did an overview of it on the channel before, so if you want to see all the insides and stuff like that, go check that video out. This is a review of the book, so if you're wondering if you want to read it, maybe you don't mind a little light spoilers, pay attention, or uh, if you've read it and you want to see if you agree with me, pay attention. I've never read any of this material ever before. Um, apparently this takes the, not place of, but it contains similar material to the old Thick Robin trade paperbacks one, two, and three, I believe. Um, so this collects uh, Batman 455 to 457, 465 to 469, 480, Detective Comics 6, 1, 618 to 621, Robin volume one, one through five, which is like the last five issues in this book, uh, and then the miniseries, Robin 2, The Joker's Wild, 1 through 4, Robin 3, Cry of the Huntress, 1 through 6, Robin, which is volume 2, 1 through 5, that's the first miniseries, uh, Robin Annual, 1 and 2, Superman number 70, Superman Man of Steel, 14, and stories from 80 Page Giant number 2, Showcase 93, 1 through 6, and 11 through 12, and it's all written by Chuck Dixon and Alan Grant, uh, with art by Tom Lyle. Uh, Tom, Tom Grummet, Norm Brayfogle, lots of great artists in here. Um, I had fun with this book. I, I did. I think the towards the end of the book, I started to get tired of it because that's when you get bogged down with all the extraneous stuff in here. Like, um, I really wanted to get to the mainline Robin series when Tom Grummet comes on. That's who drew the cover and things like that. And that's not until the last five issues of this collection. Like literally this last bit here is when you actually get to the main series that everybody loves with Chuck Dixon and Tom Grummet on art. Don't get me wrong, the first part of this book is really good. Uh, it's towards the end where you get to all the showcase stuff and the 80 page giant with the bloodlines annual that it's, you're just like, none of this stuff matters. Um, and that that's where it really get like right here in terms of the volume like all this stuff beforehand is good and this part right here up until like the last five issues like this is totally skippable to me so it's a thousand pages long like over a thousand pages or 700 it's a lot uh yeah it's over a thousand pages long 1099 yeah 1101 pages nope one 1103 so it took me quite a bit of time to read this book. That's why this video is so late uh, compared to some other videos. And uh, it, I was just, I thought I had enough time to read the book and had enough videos stacked up that I, they would release as I was reading them. And it just took a little bit longer than I thought being busy and all that. Um, so yeah, I think the first part of this book even, like is really, really cool, is really strong. Um, the original, what is strange that's not collected in here is the lonely place of dying where Tim figures out who Batman is. I would think that would be uh, part of where you want to be. You start the story for Tim Drake off, but it really starts off with the first couple of issues in Detective Comics where his parents get kidnapped, his mother dies, and uh, he figures out, or Batman kind of figures out, like, all right, this this kid can be the new Robin. But this first whole chunk of issues is Tim kind of being a detective trying to help out Batman, trying to figure out where his parents are, Batman trying to save his parents. Like, it's a really engaging story, this couple of Detective Comics issues right here. Um, and then we jump to the main Robin series. It's kind of weird that it's like, meet the new Robin, and then you flip to the first miniseries, and he's like, oh, I'm not sure about this costume. I don't know if I can be Robin. I'm so unsure of myself. And you have Batman being like, no, it's, it's fine. Um, but that first miniseries is really cool because he goes on like a, a mission to get some training. Um, you know, he he encounters this gang in the, in Metropolis and thinks like, oh, this girl's in trouble. Turns out she's part of the gang. And that is a character, Lynx, who appears throughout this massive book and each of these subsequent Robin miniseries to kind of be 
uh, Tim's foil and to remind him like, oh, not everything is as it seems. You know, you thought I was this innocent little girl, but really I'm your worst nightmare kind of thing. Uh, that's really cool. There's also a weird story in here with a vampire and Superman. That's, a, that's kind of a fun story. So I would say like what's in this book is the every Robin miniseries an important, what they somebody thought was an important Robin appearance in costume before his main title starts, right? Before you get to the Robin with the Tom Grumman artwork that everybody knows and loves, driving the Red Bird, all that stuff. Um, so all of this basically is pre-Nightfall or happening subsequent to Nightfall. Towards the end of the book, when you get into the end of the showcase issues with uh, Nightwing in his yellow costume, um, he's talking about Gene Paul being uh, Batman. You know, Azrael took over as Batman, so Batman's back is broken. And then Robin number one kicks off with this conversation with Gene Paul in the Batcave. Uh, and that's like in the middle of Night Quest, I believe, or towards the end of Night Quest before Night's End. Uh, Night's End conclusion is Robin number seven, so that should be in the next book if they do another compendium, which I hope they do, because I think that would be a really, really good read. Uh, this, all the Chuck Dixon stuff in here is really, really great. All the Alan Grant stuff in here is really, really great. So it's, it's a fun, fun read. Like I got no complaints about the writing other than when, like the showcase stuff with Catwoman and Nightwing, like there's literally three issues of Catwoman Showcase 93 in here. And uh, Robin's barely a, a presence until like the fourth issue. But they have the first three issues in here to set up all the things that Robin's doing in that fourth issue. So there's a little bit of like downtime here of Catwoman just doing a burglar thing and getting caught and getting framed and then Robin kind of coming in towards the end and him kind of taking over the case for her. And then that carries into the last two issues of the showcase uh, 93, the 11 and 12, which Nightwing's a part of, which is not clear why. Maybe there's other missing issues of showcase 93 before then that kind of bring Nightwing and Robin together that they did not include in here, but I think that's fine. To me, they were totally skippable. Like you could read the Catwoman stuff if you want, but by the time you get past the Bloodlines annual, which immediately follows it, which introduces Razor Sharp and this weird green alien thing. Uh, I guess that was an event in the 90s with um, DC Comics where these they introduced new metahumans. Like it's a really long annual, it's 80 pages, felt, felt like 100 pages. Um, once you get to the Nightwing stuff, I guarantee you're going to be like, all right, let's just get to the main Robin storyline and bring me back Ariad, Adriana, who you met in one of the Robin miniseries, uh, you know, things like that, and his buddies at school, like bring, bring me back to that. So I think it's a strong book. I, I would recommend it. I'd just be aware of this last kind of middle section towards the end here. You might get a little bit tired of not seeing the main Robin cast yet. But if uh, they're going to do another one, which I hope they do, uh, it's going to be really good because hopefully it'll be a lot more of the high school Robin stuff and Clue Master and spoiler because that's who's kind of introduced to you at the end of the book is, is those characters. So yeah, fun stuff. I had a great time reading it. This is old, old comics from or the early 1990s, you know, uh, so almost 35, 40 years ago. I think it was a lot of fun and uh, I'm enjoying reading some more. Hopefully they do another big compendium like this that I can get my hands on. So that's my review of Robin, Tim Drake, Compendium 1. Let me know what you guys thought down below in the comments, and I will see you guys next time in the Funny Pages.